Tom here from Warner Systems and Bitwarden completed another security audit. Find some minor issues, they were fixed. Now, this is a combination video of me talking about the security audit and talking about why I still use Bitwarden. And I've been using it now for about seven months. So right now it's July of 2020, and I am still really happy with my self-hosted install of Bitwarden. But I wanted to talk about these security changes and the overall usage of Bitwarden. And, you know, some I'm not going to say it's 100% perfect because no product is perfect, but their continued improvement to product has been really good. And their focus on security has made me really happy. So I'm going to talk about some of those details. And I'm not big on clickbait. So if you don't want to rush this video, yes, I'm still using it. Yes, I still like it. Yes, I still recommend it. Uh, but before we jump into those details of why, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And we'll start right here. Bitwarden 2020 security audit is complete. We take the security of Bitwarden seriously. Now they have, and over here on Hacker One, they have a bug bounty program, which is awesome. But bug bounty programs are not the same as paying a pen tester, or a company that does penetration testing, that does security auditing to really test your product. So in addition to them having a bug bounty program, in addition to their 2018 audit of their code and crypto value base, they also, once again here in 2020, hired a company called Insight Risk Consulting and made public all the findings they had of their security audit, which is some minor issues, nothing major found, no, you know, huge holes found in their security, some potential issues with cross-site scripting, some potential cores uh, tightening up that they needed to do. So nothing was terrible that they found, and of course it was fixed. And bringing up the fix is the updating. I wanna bring this part up because, of course, the evaluation of this product and me using it for this long means when these updates come, if you're using Bitwarden's site and letting them host it and getting the service directly through them, awesome, it works great, and you don't need to update anything. And that's probably a great idea for the majority of people. For me, I chose to go the self-hosted route. The self-hosted route, a little bit more challenging because there are things you have to do to configure this. It's not like it just drop it in and load it. You do have to configure a mail server to work properly with it. You have to configure proper certificates or it will not work right. And you have to make sure that you have your domain and everything configured properly. There are steps involved in that. And of course, then you have to update it yourself. The good news is the updates have gone great over the last seven months of use and their update script is really this simple and I have not had any problems at all with their updates on there. Also, by the way, if you self-host it, you have to make sure you're backing it up. These are things that people ask me a lot when we talk about the self-hosted version. It's like, yeah, great, but are you willing to put all these steps in place and making sure you back all this up because the encrypted data, there's no way to get it all back if you lose it. But here, like I said, I'll leave a link to their entire uh, details on what was found. They put, made all the findings public and everything else, and this is great. And I will bring up again that we are using it self-hosted, but we do pay for it. We are using the official Bitwarden software, and we really enjoy the Teams feature and enterprise features that you can get on here. So uh, this allows you to have the different Vault Health reports, unlimited shared items, unlimited collections with a few dollars per user per month. Now, to me, it's important that I pay these fees and I bring that up also because those penetration testings and paying hacker one bug bounties, those cost money. Their monetization model is, you know, buying their services. And even if you self host it, yes, you need to buy these. So get these questions out of the way. Um, so make sure people are very clear that just because it's open source and because you could re-edit the code and recompile it yourself to remove licenses, if that's what you wanted to do, um, it's pretty inexpensive, especially for me as a business running this, uh, to use it. So it's not been a problem to me as far as how it works. The, the way it handles the shared items, the collections as they're called for storage has been really, really great. Now, 
The one thing I like about this compared to using LastPass where I came from, and no, I don't have time to exhaust to review every other password manager out there. I went with Bitwarden because it was open source. It did have the ability to self-host, which I thought was really cool. And this adds another layer in my opinion of security. So being that I have a server stack to host this on and being that requires a VPN in order to access this server, if there were something in the wild for Bitwarden. There has not been any, there's not predicted to be any, but just in case, on that off crazy chance that there is something in the wild out there for Bitwarden, it can only be accessed behind a VPN by my staff. So it adds one more layer of protection. It's the thing I like about the self-hosted instance of this. And my overall compared to LastPass on this, the way it does collections and what a collection is essentially is a shared collection of passwords that I need shared between my team. And as a business, this is something you run into all the time. They made this really easy because if I add something to the share, no one has to accept that share. No one has to add it to their pool of things like you do in LastPass. This has the advantage from a business standpoint of making it really, really easy and fluid to be able to add things to that vault essentially of shared resources. The downside is if I wanna share a one-off password, and of course this is a challenge, uh, if I have a one-off password I wanna share with one individual, well, that's a little bit more challenging, need to be part of um, that collection and it gets a little bit it's a lot different of a concept compared to, hey, I just have this one person I want to share one password with. Um, LastPass did make that a little bit easier compared to the way Bitwarden does it, but it's kind of a minor thing to me and not something that I was really using in LastPass. I just know as a feature set, if you have just that one password you want to share, you'd have to create a collection and make the person part of that collection. So it's a little, a few more steps uh, from the design standpoint of the way Bitwarden handles it versus the way LastPass does, but that's not really been a big deal to me. Now, the only quirkiness that I've run into is on occasion, but of course, without having used LastPass um, in the last seven months, maybe this issue still persisted in both. I do know occasionally, and this was a problem even sometimes, like I said, with both and other password managers, I do know from talking to friends that use other ones suffer from this. Sometimes when you change a password, it will not realize you're changing a password and you have to copy and paste it essentially manually into Bitwarden. I seem to see this, I think a little bit more often with Bitwarden, a lot less often when I was using LastPass, but it's also the nature of some of these sites. If they have a, a different domain, a different methodology that doesn't match the URL exactly the same, sometimes it won't realize you're changing a password on that. But it's a kind of a minor complaint, but it's it's there. Now, the good news is Bitwarden kind of can easily work around this. And if I have a site that I'm going to change passwords on a lot and it has that problem, it's really easy in Bitwarden to list out for a particular site multiple instances where you can adjust that essentially URI. And I'll show you how that works real quick. So if you have a specific item that you want, and this is just an internal server, so um, it's got an IP address instead of a name, you can put whatever you want in here. But for the URI, if there was something, for example, it was admin dot, you know, whatever it is, dot com, you can add each additional one really easy so you can get that matching. So like I said, it's kind of a minor issue on there. It is also interesting too, they do have the authenticator key, TOTP. I don't have this filled. And one of the reasons why is having the authenticator in there kind of, to me, defeats two factor. Because if you got into Bitwarden and I have the rolling numbers in here, in addition to the password on here, um, that feels like I've now put all my eggs in one basket. So once you have access to this, there's not that two factor. So I like keeping everything separate on there. Uh, so that's something of note in there. Now, the other things, if I want to create this into a shared item, I can just click this, like I'd said before, making it real easy and not having to notify anyone. Anyone else that's part of that collection instantly gets access to that resource. And I do find myself using quite a bit the hidden field options. So if I wanted to add some custom thing, uh, have a name and a value and then make that hidden. So um, some other key, some other key value, and you can keep that value hidden. And then when we hit save, it will save it. And then I can copy this without seeing it or hit the eye to see it. And of course, once this is edited in this item and if it was added to a collection where my staff could see it, it's pretty easy. So if you wanted to add those little extra features, it's not been a big deal. And of course, adding some notes to any of them, pretty straightforward on the way it edits. Now, things I'm not using, I do not use this on my phone. And the reason why is once again, my two-factor codes 
no surprise, right, are on my phone, rolling TOTP numbers. If I had my password manager on my phone with my TOTP numbers, now you can have a one device. Now, granted, I do lock that device, I keep it secured, but having both things in one place seems like it's generally a bad idea. So I uh, painstakingly, if I have to have a password input on my phone, I will painstakingly get that password through the web browser version of Bitwarden. I don't, I mean, it has a desktop app. I don't really use it. I've tested it, it works, but I'll get the password there, put that tedious password into my phone, and now I feel confident that I have not shared that in some way on there. So those are some minor things, but I've, I did that even with LastPass. It's not really a Bitwarden thing. It does have a phone app. It does have the ability to do those other things I said, where you can have it all integrated. You can have an app on your desktop if you want. They have that, including in Linux, by the way, uh, which is cool, but they're not really things I use. Now, my overall, like I said, I'm really happy with it. And other than the minor occasional password change issues, which are rare, but something to keep in mind, keep your mind on because, well, if you change a password and you're like, crap, I didn't save it or it didn't ask me to update it and I still have the old one in there, um, just make sure you copy and paste it in there and watch for that. It's a minor problem. It's not like you're changing passwords all the time. And on you know more commercial sites, let's say like Amazon, eBay, your more popular sites, it doesn't seem to do that. It's only on some of the one-off unusual sites, but I know some of them just have different weird authentication methods and non-standard URLs for things. Therefore, that's probably what causes that problem. And you can add the new URI, like I said. Now, the final thing I'll mention is I am aware of, but not interested in using Bitwarden Rust. Um, there is another implementation of Bitwarden that is pulled from the same source code and redone in Rust. Um, I'm not intimately familiar with the project, but it's something I don't have an interest in. I like to keep everything uh, for my business officially using all the proper Bitwarden uh, sources because, well, they just went through security audit. Uh, my contributions to buying those licenses helps with that security audit and the cost of it. So I'm perfectly fine paying for this service, even though I self-host it. Uh, it's not something I see an issue with at all. So my thoughts on Bitwarden? Hey, I'd still give it a two thumbs up. It's been a great product. I plan to continue using it. I don't have any changes in mind in sight. It's open source. It allows me for self-hosting. It's been really very reliable. We haven't lost any passwords. We haven't had any weird corruption or strange issues with it. No quirkiness to report, which is uh, important. The updates have all gone smooth and not lost any data either, which is also really important. Um, it, and for the most part, I've you know, they've been really straightforward to do. Uh, updating the base server with, you know, it's Debian, so after get update and updating the uh, Bitwarden with their little update tool, that's all gone really small. That's just a Docker, so pulling that has been uh, really straightforward and easy. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, concerns, head over to the forums where I'll also be posting this if you want to have a more in-depth discussion, so it's much appreciated. Um, but that's it, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.